Hello, everyone, and welcome to the amazing interview that we had promised. We have Colin Moriarty, the pride of Long Island, uh, joining us uh, here. Uh, Colin, what's going on, man? Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. Glad to be here with you. Oh, very excited to uh, be interviewing you. I'm a, uh, a big fan of, of you and kind of funny. Uh, I really, I got to say before we jump into the interview, Colin, uh, your politics, spot on, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm hearing that a lot because I just feel like people are, are scared to express themselves if they don't belong in the echo chamber. So, um, you know, I never really cared much if I was in the echo chamber or not. So <laughs> I just say what so I just say what I need to say. And I'm glad it's resonating with people. You know, yeah, it's, it's really the, the, the message of personal liberty. It's refreshing <laughs> to hear that from uh, people that are our age, uh, just in general. And I'll kind of leave it at that. But it's really cool to hear. So I agree. Thank you. Uh, well, as far as interviews go at uh, Classic Leet, we have a bit of a tradition, Colin, and okay. we'd like to ask people what their first system was, and okay. then what was their favorite genre growing up? Uh, my, the first system, I mean, we had an Atari 2600, but that was, bef that was my brother's before I was born. The first console I, I really had was an NES. Okay. Um, and, uh... My, genre, my favorite genre growing up were side scrollers, um, but I in the '90s I really fell in love with the JRPGs as well. So, um, so I would say like side scroller, you know, action games like Castlevania and Mega Man, and then JRPGs like Final Fantasy VI and Wild Arms and stuff like that. Uh, you fit in really well here. Uh, <laughs> kind of what we're known for. Uh, cool. So good deal there. So can you give us a, a little bit of history about your professional career in video games? Sure. Um, I started writing professionally in 2002. Uh, I was 18. Um, I had been writing for fan sites and for Game Facts uh, from age 14 to 18. Uh, IGN approached me in uh, September or October of 2002 and asked me to start writing strategy guides as a freelancer. So I, I started doing that and then uh, later on I became an intern. And this was while I was going to college at Northeastern. I, I went to Northeastern University during this time. and. Uh, I interned over one summer and I just freelanced and did a bunch of stuff for them and they basically paid the bills when I was in college and then uh, when I had graduated they offered me a job um, so um, awesome. and that was in 2007 so I was associated with IGN pretty much full time from, from 2002 to uh, the end of 2014 and then uh, that was the only site I ever worked for um, and the only place I ever freelanced for so uh, yeah so my, my relationship with them was pretty much intimately intertwined with my whole experience in this industry. Yeah. Very cool. And then now, you, uh, Greg, Tim, and Nick, and Kevin, have uh, put together uh, Kind of Funny Games. And that's really why I wanted to bring you on was to talk about Kind of Funny and Kind of Funny Games. So, uh, for any of our listeners that might not be... I'm sorry. Sorry. It's, uh, that's a person on a scooter. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's no problem. <laughs> I, I, we live on like a, a main road in San Francisco. So. No, no, that's no problem. I was just like, oh god, please don't let that be my internet crapping out. <laughs> no, the look of fear in your face was awesome. Though. I was like, oh Sorry about man, that. there it goes. It'll, yeah, all of our windows are open. It's un, it's unseasonably hot in San. It doesn't really get hot in San Francisco, so it's really hot right now. And for us, it's like in you know seventy five or eighty. Yeah, that's and, what uh, here. So yeah, I apologize about that. No problem at all. Uh, so, anyways, uh, kind of funny. Uh, you guys started it uh, a little less than a year ago, right? Uh, yeah, we started. Time? Yeah, yeah, we started in September um, of 2014. Uh, before that, we were doing videos for a couple of years um, under Game Over Greggy, which was Greg's old channel. And we decided mm -hmm. to kind of rebrand it to kind of represent the four of us as stakeholders and you know the business owners because we actually owned a piece of Game Over Greggy as well. But we wanted to um, the three of us did, but we wanted to uh, you know brand it in a way that would let it grow and not be just about Greg because it's not just about Greg; it's mm -hmm. about the content we all do. Um, so yeah, we, we founded it in September and uh, uh, launched it then and then the response was so fantastic and so overwhelming that we decided to just quit our jobs and do it full time. So. so for people that haven't heard of you, which would in our listener base is probably pretty rare, uh, what would you or how would you describe what, what you guys do at Kind of Funny? I always talk about it as like kind of a more like your. We talk about you know being your friend on the couch or your friend next to you, kind of your buddies talking to you about games. We're not really trying to be hard news. We're not hard news. We don't consider ourselves journalists at all. Um, and that was even an open question about what was journalism even when we were you know at IGN, like were we really journalists? 
Um, that's a question for another day. But uh, we kind of abandoned that more traditional media model because we don't really feel like that's the future. Um, and we want to have a more intimate relationship with our viewers um, and, you know, be able to interpret the news and interpret, you know, games and talk about things more intimately and be stupid and silly and, and gregarious and whatever it is we want to be at the time as opposed to being kind of more buttoned up. Uh, that's just not our style. That was never our style on Podcast Beyond, which was a podcast that we obviously, um, you know, were popular for back in the day. Um, and uh, so we decided to just do something a little different. And, and, you know, so we just do the normal kind of let's plays and, um, and stuff like that. But then we do our two podcast products and we do Colin and Greg live in the morning, which is our kind of sports inspired nerd, nerd talk show. Um, not about sports, but inspired by my love of sports. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of just all the products in one and we just, we're doing really well and we're, we're, we're mostly supported by our fans on Patreon to the tune, I think right now, of like $48,000 a month. So we, we really appreciate, we really appreciate them and, um, you know, really want to deliver a good product for them. And that's kind of the, our number one focus. And that's the beauty of it is that we're small enough and we're nimble enough and we're, you know, it's only five of us that, um, and really only four of us that are on camera that we can respond when something's fucked up or wrong and we can fix things that are, that are not right. And, and solicit feedback. So I like this kind of small ecosystem that we've developed. And the other cool thing I'm really excited about with Kind of Funny is that it's really positive. Um, we might shit on games every once in a while. We always tell our, the honest truth about games we don't like and stuff like that. But the people around us um, are a really positive group. And, I, and I'm really proud of that because I feel like people take for granted the negativity on the internet. And um, that's not really uh, true if you just try. <laughs> you know, so. No, absolutely. It was uh, interesting when we were going back and forth getting all of this scheduled, that was one of the things that you're like, you know, we can talk about anything that you want, but I'm not in the mood to talk about industry drama. Yeah, I just, I just don't like, care. You know, that's yeah. refreshing. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's not as much to talk about there. Uh, one of the things that we always mention on the show is how much fun playing games together is, just sure. uh, in like a co-op manner. And you guys take that approach just with all the content you make, and uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I mean, to, to the industry drama thing, it's just like some people are really like some people that are really tuned into gaming media, even though they're not in the games media. They, they they read the sites and stuff like that. Like you know, the most core gamers perhaps are just really into like the behind the scenes kind of like drama and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I don't. First of all, there's there really is none. And second of all, like I don't really want to, you know. I just hate talking about that shit. I want to focus on like the positive, like what what are people celebrating, not what people are tearing yeah. down. You know, it's mm -hmm. just there's so much of that kind of shit out there. I just I don't. I'm too old for that. Like I I, I you know. <laughs> I, that's what that's what we like about kind of funny is that we just we just you know it's not that we're always positive about everything it's just that we try to maintain a positive outlook yeah uh, and that's a challenge it's something you have to actively kind of do I'm not I'm not inherently a positive person it's it, it's it's me like changing my own outlook and, and being more positive about those kinds of things so I'm glad you agree because yeah I'm, I'm down I, I'll talk about whatever whatever you guys want it's just like I'm sick of focusing on or some people's focus rather on on just the negative you know mm, there's yeah. so much positive to talk about too <clears throat> So the way you guys have been blowing up in popularity, uh, what would you say has been your biggest surprise up to this point? I think the level of support has been a big surprise for us as we, we were on um, uh, an entrepreneurial podcast uh, mm -hmm. called uh, Monocle 24, I think, uh, which is pretty popular in England. And one of the things we had talked to them about, and we've, we've discussed with our audience before, because we really like to be open with our audience uh, about everything that's going on with our business. I think it's really important, especially because it's so heavily funded by them. Um, is that we did three kind of forecast models before we left IGN um, about like, you know, the fucked model where we would be totally screwed, like the okay model where we can scrape by and the model where we're good. And we are, we've surpassed that good model two times over. Um, and so with that comes added pressure because I want, you know, it's so important to me that people are happy with the product, that people, um, you know, are getting something out of it or enjoying it, and it's something that they can that resonates with them and they can relate to. Um, and it's even heightened more when you become more successful than you even thought you were going to be because we did not anticipate this level of success at least this soon. Um, so I think it's just that it's it's not only the monetary part of it, you know, um, of the, the the high level of support that our fans have so graciously given us. It's really just the overall success and the resonation that we've had with uh, resonation is not a word resonance uh, <laughs> with uh, the audience, um, you know, hey, and, and and publishers and developers and all that. So you're totally allowed to make up words on this podcast and we do it. Oh, all thank you. We, we I, hate, yes. I hate making up words. It's, it makes, I cringe <laughs> when I hear made up words and I just made one up. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that, that it's really just the broad level of support we've gotten from every corner that we really needed it from that has been really cool. You know, publishers are uh, totally in our corner and our access has not, is actually really only grown. Um, 
in, in weird ways because now we aren't only connected with the triple A's, but we really pay a lot of attention to indies, which was always really important to me. Even at IGN, I was really pretty well known for that when I was there was yeah. to, to pull up some of these games that I really liked that no one was talking about. Um, and, uh, and then we have our support from our fans, and it's a small group. It's an intimate group of people. It's tens of thousands of people. I don't. We don't really know how to interpret the numbers. It could be fifty thousand, hundred thousand. I don't know. But it's not the millions of people that used to read IGN. But I, I like it like that. I feel like I recognize names. I feel like I have. You know, I, I we. You know, some people in our audience are, are have become really good friends of ours. And uh, you know, Sean Pitts is a great example. A guy who is really showing us something or is really, really hustling and wants to, you know, help us in any way and stuff. And it's just, it's, so it's, it's cool to be able to relate on that. So really in general, everything's been surprising because we, we had hopes, but the hopes have been surpassed. And my only hope now is that we're, we're meeting everyone's expectations. So far so good. So, uh, Thank you. what would you say then just to kind of boil it down a little bit, something that maybe you've led as part of kind of funny over the last year that you, maybe you're the most proud of. Oh, I'm I'm most proud of Colin and Greg um, live. Uh, you know, we do let's plays and let and a lot of people do let's plays and some people probably do them better than us. I don't really watch them because that's that's one of the funny things is that I don't really consume games media, um, and I never really have. I don't listen. To, everyone's always like, "What are the game podcasts?" I listen to. I don't want to listen to games podcasts. Like what what YouTube series you watch? I'm like, I don't watch YouTube really. You know, like I, I watch like politics shows and, and stuff like that, but. I'm gonna That's have like to edit, I'm gonna have to edit that out and like I don't listen to podcasts. Call Moriarty was on our show. <laughs> no, it's, no, 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 I'm the, just the, teasing. The thing is, is that like. That's why I think it works. You know, mm -hmm. Greg and I are not really podcast listeners. Podcast Beyond was what we thought a podcast should be. You know what I mean? And without really having any any notion of what other people were doing, which is why I think it was successful because it was different. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't different to try to be different. It was different because we didn't know any better. Yeah. And and. Uh, that's why I'm so excited about what we're doing with Colin and Greg Live because I feel like a lot of games types, and especially old games media, is looking at each other. Like, what is everyone else doing and what can we do to succeed? And I was like, well, no one is doing any, like, I really think, I've always said, I've said it many times, media generally, and especially entertainment media, like, like enthusiast media can learn a great deal from ESPN. And um, the way ESPN covers sports is so dominant that there is no competitor. And like, no one cares about Fox Sports. No one cares about any of these, like these channels, CBS Sports, NBC Sports. No one cares. You know, like it, people love ESPN. ESPN is synonymous with sports coverage. There is no equal. And when I was looking at their catalog as a huge sports fan, I'm a huge Jets fan, I'm a huge Islanders fan. I, I, I'm, I'm, for, I'm, I'm fucking crazy about football and hockey. I was like, pardon the interruption. It's like one of my favorite shows. And no one does anything like that for sport or for, for, uh, for games and for yeah. like kind of nerds. And I was like, why don't we just do something like that? And I can't believe we stumbled upon this idea that no one was doing. Um, and uh, so Colin and Greg Live was born out of that. And so I think that that's the product that I'm most proud of because unlike the podcast that maybe some other people do, different kinds of podcasts, kind of different twists on the same thing, or people do their Let's Plays different. It's all about kind of the personalities that resonate with you and all those kinds of things. No one is doing Colin and Greg Live. And uh, that's that that's a point of pride for me um, and a point for pride for us, especially watching the show grow from – Three or four thousand concurrents a day to six, seven, eight thousand concurrents a day, That's um, awesome. and then all, and then all the VOD like it's res you know Twitch is totally behind us. They put us on the the front page. People have been sending us. Um, they they're even advertising TwitchCon in September using us using Colin and Greg. Um, and uh, I think that that's really cool. So I'm super proud of that show. But that said, I'm proud of a lot of the things we do. We have um, some great initiatives. I'm, I'm one of the, one of the things that's really important to me is Greg and I are pretty well known as a t as a tandem and pretty well known talking about games and, we're, and we become popular doing that. Um, but we have Tim and Nick with us who are really more well known for being behind the camera or kind of producing and directing and writing. And one of the cool things that I, uh, that's important to me is someone who's not, you know, I, it's not, I don't want it to really be all about me. I'm kind of a little shy and, kind of, and all those kinds of things. Eventually I want, you know, I, that's why I like working with Greg is because he takes all the attention away, which is, is makes me feel better. It makes me feel a little <laughs> safe. Is that we've, 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 gotten, we've gotten Tim and we've gotten Nick on camera more often, they're doing love and sex stuff as, as an example, which is one of our new series, which is fucking massively popular. And I'm so, I'm so happy for them too because it diversifies our product and gets some new faces on camera and all those kinds of things. So, um, so yeah, Colin and Greg Live has been really fun, but it's been cool watching the ideas that the guys have been coming up with too. And we have some new ideas, some really fucking awesome ones that I'm, I'm excited about that are kind of uh, marinating right now, and we'll have more to say about those soon. Awesome, for sure. Yeah, I won't, I won't press you for any, uh, any exclusives. <laughs> yeah, we, we we're not ready to talk about it yet. I, I know that whatever it, what what it is is gonna is gonna make people very very excited. Sweet. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. I'm positive. I'm positive about that. Actually, that's why I'm so excited to reveal it. So are you starting? Sorry, I, Dustin. I know you're up next, but uh, no, no, you're good, dude. 
Are you starting to get, you said you were shy, are you starting to get uh, more confident in, in the ideas that you have, like putting them forward to the group? Sure, I mean, it, it, I, should, I, should, I should qualify that because I'm not shy around my friends at all. And I'm not shy amongst, I could be in a group of a million people and be fine. It's, I get a little nervous and I get, my anxiety has been growing a lot where I have to be in front of people that are expecting me to say something and I feel like I don't want to let them down, I don't want to disappoint them and they're, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, it's grown a lot. Like my anxiety has grown pretty significantly, actually, just just based on that. And I like talking about it openly because I want people to know that they're not the only ones if they feel the same way. Um, you know, they can really. It's the same way how like when I, I have like significant colon and stomach problems, and it's gross, and no one likes talking about that <laughs> stuff. But I, I, you know, when I ha when I got my colonoscopies, and my endoscopies, and stuff, I was like, you know what? It's fucked up. But like, you have to do it. Like, pay attention to your body. Those kinds of things. No one's gonna fucking tell you that. So I'm gonna tell you that. I don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, I want you to be healthy and all those kinds of stuff. So same thing with my anxiety. It's not an easy thing to talk about, but I like talking about it because it makes people feel like they're not alone. And I get a lot of messages being like, I can, I can relate to you. And I'm like, I know, I know I'm not the only one. There's just a stigma about it. Um, but yeah, things are, you know, the scarcity model works for me well, where like you, these guys go to a lot of shows and I, you know, I'll go to PAX Prime, for instance, uh, in September. And that will be uh, my first show in a while. And it'll be, I'll be feel rejuvenated and people will be excited to see me and stuff like that. So it's not easy for me to deal with. It's like one of my own internal demons that I have to deal with. But um, the guys have been really patient with me and I appreciate that so much. Um, and because uh, people can really be dicks about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like what's the problem and all those kind of stuff. And my, these guys really understand me in a level where um, they know it's a, it's a problem and, and I don't want to expose myself to um, being too uncomfortable. So I like to stay behind and make sure the ship is still running and, and you know, drive the ship and do Colin and Greg live and answer emails and kind of set things up as we just announced we're doing the Mega Man Legacy Collection stream on this Wednesday, depending on when this goes up, that might have already happened, um, where we're going to reveal the release date and all those kinds of things. A lot of that takes like some behind the scenes effort. So I like doing more of that kind of stuff, like support role kind of stuff when I can't be with them. Very cool. Um, so I deal with it the best I can, but you know, in case any of your listeners have anxiety, you know, they're not the only ones either. And Dan Reichert, I was just uh, I was just about to ask yeah. if you read if you read Dan Reichert's book. I, I he came, I I've not read it. He came over when it was announced, and we we talked about it on the show and stuff because you know, I can relate to what he's saying. I can relate to the way he felt and how he overcame it. So, and that book's been really powerful apparently for a lot of people. So they it's should called it Anxiety Is an Ally or something like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, bought it when he announced it. I'm a we're big Giant Bomb fans too. So cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so what we got next, Dustin? Uh, okay, so you've written a few FAQs. Uh, what got you into writing them, and which one stands out to you the most? Yeah, my FAQs, I, I think I wrote 32 or something, um, were, I just liked doing it. I always liked to write, and I felt like it was a way, I think I was 14 when I wrote my first one for Mega Man 1. Mm -hmm. um, I remember it pretty lucidly some, for some reason, because I wrote 1, 2, and 3 pretty quickly, like on top of each other. And because um, I was really inspired, I just like doing it. I, I use Game Facts. I found it useful. I found I, I wanted to be useful to other people. Get involved in that community. It definitely helped develop my writing chops, which I am super appreciative of because I needed it at the time. I go back and read some of those FAQs, and I'm like, they're they're pretty good, you know, for for 14, 15, 16 year old kid. I'm like, I don't know if I'd reward anything in this particular paragraph or whatever. Um, the one that sticks out to me the most, I think, is the most popular one, which is my Zelda Link to the Past FAQ, which people love. Okay. Um, but I did some other big ones. Super Mario Sunshine was pretty big. Um, Animusha, uh, I collaborated with on, on with someone. But those FAQs were the reason I got my job offer or my my freelance offer initially. So I mean, I owe everything to those FAQs, and that's that's why I keep them up. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know if you're ever aware, uh, but Vinny Caravella and Alex Navarro were playing through Simon's Quest. Yeah, um, they used my god. Yeah, they and they didn't and they didn't realize it at first. They're like, "Come on, yeah. see Moriarty," and I'm like, "How can you not know that that's Colin?" <laughs> Yeah, that, that was mine. Yeah, we were texting or tweeting back and forth about that. I, I think there was a few errors in it too, but I'm not going to go back and edit them. Um, yeah, it's it's funny. I I, uh, I owe a great deal to those FAQs. I, I kind of miss those days. They were a little more innocent, those dial-up days, you know, when you <laughs> yeah. when there was no, uh, like video walkthroughs and shit like that. I just don't, I don't find that very romantic, you know. I like yeah. the idea of having ASCII art and, you know, 79, you know, characters per line and inch and a half margins and shit. I don't know. There's something there's something really innocent about those times. Very nostalgic for me now that I'm 30 years old thinking back on more than half a lifetime ago when I really started doing it. Yeah. That's nuts. If only something I was good at when I was 14 would have panned out and then maybe... I, I gotta be clear. I'm very lucky. I'm very fortunate. The thing I, the thing I always say is I think I'm a, I'm a really good writer, but you know, and I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that because I, I worked really hard at it. But there are better writers than me out there. Many of them. There are people that know more games, more than you know about games than I do. 
it's just that I was in the right place at the right time. I was able to kind of develop under people that really that really gave me the time of day and, and helped me. So I, I never act like, look how fucking great I am. I made it happen. I'm like, well, my hard work <laughs> and my determination were definitely a big part of that. But so was luck and timing. You know, like yeah. I, I'd be I'd be a fool not to acknowledge that. It could they could have literally emailed anyone at GameFAQs that day. You know, yeah, anyone, and they emailed me. So. Um, you know, I'm not like here. You know, it's like a fucking. It's like the the. It's like just destiny. You know, what I mean, it's just like it's just it's just it happened because maybe it was meant to happen. Sure. Um, but it, but it certainly didn't happen because of raw skill and raw talent. It was a part of it, but it was not the whole thing. So I always try to encourage people to not get down on themselves if if you know it's not working out for them at the right time because it, it wasn't necessarily going to work out for me either if I wasn't there at the right time. Sure, and that was uh, just you talking about um, giving props to. Uh, other people and acknowledging that that there are people that know more or that maybe could write better. One of oh, my uh, favorite segments that you guys have done was when you started talking about different YouTubers, different writers. Uh, we actually brought that up on our podcast. So I kind of stole that and said, "Hey guys, you know who are some of your YouTubers that that we don't talk about on the show?" Sure. Uh, we're like kind of funny, did. Uh, what do you guys think? And I just thought that was a really cool segment. Thank you. That was uh, Tim's idea, and and it was. Uh it, it's fun to talk about it because it, the one thing I'm always astonished about, and I, I've talked about this a little bit in the past, is like I hear a name and they're like, "Oh, don't you listen to this guy or watch this guy?" I'm like, "I, I, I don't." And I'm like, "Who the fuck is that?" You know? Mm -hmm. And then I, I look them up and I'm like, "Wow, they have a million Twitter followers and millions of YouTube." You know, like the the, the gaming landscape is so vast that there's so much room for people to just kind of gravitate where they want to. Totally ignorant of the other shit that's going on around them. At least, at least that's you know maybe I'm just old and out of touch, but I mean that's kind of the way. That I look at it, which I think is so cool. There's a lot of choice. It's and, the way it is uh, for us too. So yeah, yeah I, I think it's great. Like I hear this name, that name, and the other name, and I'm like, I don't know who this person is. And then I'm like, well, they're way, way, way fucking bigger than we are. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know. And I'm not saying I'm not trying to say I don't know who you are as an arrogant thing. I'm just saying like I don't know who who, who that is. Um, and I'm always surprised to learn how many just massive names and talents there are in YouTube specifically because I think I know traditional media probably pretty well. Where I, I, there's no names slipping slip through the cracks there, but um, but yeah, there are people that. Like I've, I've said before, like Jeremy Parrish is like one of my heroes, and I, I know him personally. Um, and I don't even really talk about games in front of him because he just just knows way more than I do. Sometimes you have to respect, you know. People say like I know games like encyclopedically and stuff, and I'm like I appreciate that. But there are people that fucking know games, man. And I, I sometimes you have to just shut the fuck up and learn, you know, yeah. listen. Um, and that's the way I feel about people like him, you know, um, that just that write well and are eloquent and just have drive and determination. I mean, he just wrote a book about Game Boy. Um, and I'm like, that's such a great topic, you know, to cover such a such an excellent topic to cover. But there are other guys. Vince, who is a guy who I helped hire, you know, bring in at IGN and really encouraged to, to, to apply there and encouraged us to to give him a chance and, and interview him and stuff. Um, I think is a better writer than I am. You know, so it's it's uh, and I tell him that all the time. Yeah, I remember uh, you bringing him up uh, actually in that segment that uh, Tim created for you guys. Uh, and, and Dustin, you now have. A link to uh, Six Degrees of Separation uh, with Jeremy Parrish. Idol, Jeremy Parrish. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's one of uh, Dustin's uh, favorite guys in gaming too. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah. He's, fan he's fantastic. He one of my first. I think it was my first time in Japan. Actually, he showed me around. Um, oh, right on. It was uh, it was awesome. He's just a really really friendly dude. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been a huge fan of his since uh, they started Retronauts way back when. Mm hmm. So uh, a couple, a couple other quick questions, Colin. Then we'll, then we'll let sure. you go. Um, sure. One thing that I'm really curious about: you've been in games for for quite a while. So, are there any trends that that you see that you're really interested in, or might have you excited? Yeah, the the, the one thing that I, I've been looking at lately is games are so latent in terms of the nugget of the idea in the pre-production up until when a game is released that you're you always see the remnants of an idea that was really good a few years ago start like piling on later on. And by like an example of that I, that I'm seeing lately is uh, open world, you know? Um, this wasn't a novel, I mean open world goes back 30 years depending on how you interpret it, but um, everything's fucking open world now. Like everything mm -hmm. is open world. It, it feels weird to play, you feel almost claustrophobic when you're not playing an open world game. But it's funny to see like that the DNA of that in terms of its, re re its resurgence or it's, it's just its revitalization in, in terms of a genre or a subgenre in the industry is comes from Fallout and it comes from, it's the same thing with Mass Effect and choice, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Like after that, everyone like, had choice in their games. It just took a while. So I'm always fascinated to see how things crop up later on because you can't just shove a game out of a door in six months. 
Um, and uh, so the one thing, I, so I'm seeing a lot of open world games right now, and that's going to continue to happen. I mean, it's just everything is open world. The three biggest games of the year so far were open world. Four, really, actually, because you think about Dying Light, Bloodborne, uh, Batman, and Witcher. Witcher, yeah. All, all open world games. Um, and then Mad Max and Metal Gear and Fallout. I mean, there's it's all just open fucking world games. Yeah, it's, that, it's weirder. It's weirder to play. Like Uncharted is going to be weird because it's not going to be open world. Yeah, and that, no. you know, and that's and I'm like, I I, I kind of crave that kind of experience again, which is funny because I really craved open world until they started shoving it down everyone's throats. Um, so I see that, and then I think VR is going to be really big. Yeah. So. Um, uh, whether or not it's going to be commercially viable immediately, I don't know. But I, I really feel that VR is, is um, like I said before, and other people have put it, you know, just as eloquently. Um, I stole the verbiage from someone at some point. It, it, it's a religious experience. And, yeah, I've, uh, I've heard that people, especially when uh, people were coming out of the uh, Vive demo. Uh, oh, I haven't they, even I haven't even fucked with that yet. They, they were like, like "This is this is different." This is, and these are guys that have had experience with Crescent Bay from Oculus and, and a lot of other VR technologies are saying, Oh my God, something really is happening here. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's gonna be an essential kind of stepping stone because everyone's always like, what does next gen mean or what is what is you know next gen or this gen mean? And to me I'm like, it's not gonna mean anything really different. Paradigm shifting is just gonna mean the way I always put it was Back in the PS3 era with a, a machine that had 512 megabytes of RAM, half of which had to be used for graphics, you got games like Skyrim that couldn't run, right? Mm -hmm. But then you got really pretty games like The Last of Us and Uncharted that were kind of like load-based and linear. Um, and I'm like, you're just going to get games that look like The Last of Us and play like Skyrim. That's that that's that's next gen because now they have the the the, the RAM, the literal horsepower to, to make those games happen. Yeah. But I think that the paradigm shifting, genre shifting new experiences, new experiences are going to come on VR. Yeah. And, uh, and E Valkyrie is, was a religious experience when I played it. Like, I, I, I don't know how else to put it. I was like, this is incredible. I can't, I, I can't believe that this is a game. And I've always wanted to be, it's like playing Battlestar Galactic. It's like being a Viper pilot, you know? And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> right. And, um, and, uh, so I think that VR is the tech that is necessary to make these next steps. I'm not saying that things have to change. I'll be fine playing. I'd play Mega Man every fucking year if they made it for the rest of my life. You know, like there's some things that just don't get old. But if we want new experiences, I think it's going to come from VR. But then VR is going to have the problem of how it's not shareable. You you can't show it to anyone. And that's going to be a huge commercial problem for them. Yeah, you have absolutely. to wear it. Mm -hmm. But once you do wear it, I think you believe it. I've never really met anyone that, that tried VR and don't, doesn't believe in it. So Very cool. All right, so what upcoming? It doesn't. It doesn't even have to be like a, a 2015 game. What upcoming game are you the most excited about? Mighty Number no. Nine, but it, it's unclear um, if it's even coming out this year. Now I still don't know. Um, there's a lot of rumors going on that it's 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 delayed until 2016. But Mighty Number no. Nine is definitely the game that I was I was most excited about. Now that that's gotten pushed out, I'm actually really excited about Mad Max um, from Avalanche. Um, it comes out the same day as Metal Gear. I'm gonna play Mad Max instead of Metal Gear, which I know is weird to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then obviously Fallout um, is yeah. gonna be you know, a, a fucking huge deal as well. But beyond that, I, I feel like you know, I like one of my favorite things is going to the PlayStation blog and just reading the drop that our friend Ryan Clements writes and just seeing what little games are coming out that, that haven't even been talked about or just have flown under the radar because I feel like there's a lot of gems in there too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, AAA space Fallout. You know, the more indie space, Mighty Number no. Nine, and then the in between space is probably Mad Max. Cool. cool. Yeah. And then uh, last question, Colin. Uh, sure. Well, well, two last questions. One: Have you played Ori in the Blind Forest? I have. Did you? Um, I like it a lot. I've okay. never been in it, but but yeah, we I went hands on it with it pretty extensively actually before it came out. Very cool. Um, and then when I did the when I hosted the Bloodstained um, Ritual of the Night live stream reveal uh, with Iga, we had a speedrunner come in and I, and I saw basically the whole game being just glitched to shit um, so they can beat it in like 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, phenomenal game. Really, Moon Studio is really interesting. I'm, I'm super interested to see what they do with that game in the future, uh, but I have not, or with that series rather, because I think there's a nugget of something, even if it's not those same characters, because I know how the game ends. Um, there's something really cool and special about that game. Yeah, um, it's my favorite cool game of the year. Yeah, Microsoft has been doing an excellent job of identifying, playing Sony's game, basically, of identifying uh, some independent second-party talent that they can publish exclusively on their console because they know exclusives um, are super helpful and they don't really have any. And mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's going to be huge for them. That's why I'm so excited about this fall because 
Sony has shit. They have nothing, you know, and it's not going to change. I don't think they're going to, I don't think it's going to change. I don't think they have anything um, except for the Uncharted collection and maybe No Man's Sky, but I don't think so. And, you know, Microsoft has Forza and they have Halo and they have Gears and they have like, and Tomb Raider, even though it's not really an exclusive. Um, but for a full super- year, isn't it a full year though? It is a full year exclusive, but everyone knew. It. I, 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 as an aside, I loved how it took them like a year and a half to admit it was coming to PS4, um, <laughs> even though it was obvious. Uh, so I'm super interested to see like Sony's probably sold about twice as many consoles as Xbox as Microsoft has at this point, right? About 25.3. Do you assume? So Microsoft doesn't really talk numbers, but you assume 12 or 13 million Xbox Ones, maybe at the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super interested to see if the needle moves at all because Sony's been selling their console with nothing. Like that's that, that's the. They have third-party games. They have great indie selection, but in terms of big exclusives, Killzone was a lot of fun, but it's not really a system seller. Infamous again was fun, but it's not a system seller. Bloodborne might be really a substantial game to some people, but it again not a system seller. Drive Club did two million copies, but they have not had the Uncharted yet. You know, like the the game, like the big marquee, like this is why you buy a console game necessarily. Yeah. And they're not going to have it until 2016. So will the needle move and will things truncate a little bit? The space between them kind of gets smaller. If it doesn't, Microsoft's screwed because yeah. it doesn't matter. And and. Uh, if you can't sell that console with Gears and Halo at the same time, um, then you're in a lot of trouble, especially when your competitor has nothing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, 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 and there's so much more in 2016 with Crackdown and with uh, uh, what the fuck is the uh, the Remedy game? Why can't I think of the Remedy game? Uh, the guys mm-hmm. at Alan Wake, uh, Quantum Break. Oh, okay. Um, mm-hmm. And Scalebound and all this kind of stuff. They're going to reveal a lot of stuff at Gamescom. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm super interested to see, I think it's actually tomorrow morning, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, the Microsoft thing. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. So we're gonna be have a lot of the Xbox news then on on uh, Colin and Greg live. But I think I think that the price is right for them and everything. So I, I I'm super interested. This is not the question you asked, but I'm super interested no. to see. What they, <laughs> That's fine. What they do as well. Uh, the real last question was just what have you been playing lately? Uh, I've been working, trying to work through Final Fantasy X. Okay. Um, and I fucking hate it. <laughs> um, it's. I have a I have a, a a really intimate familiarity with the Final Fantasy series up until that point, and I always felt well. There's two things I always felt. I'm like, hey, like I never admit that I never give this game a fair shake. I was in 12th grade when it came out. It was right after 9/11. I remember buying it. I played it for a few hours. I'm like, I hate this game, and I, I put it down. I just didn't, it didn't resonate with me, and I'm like, I should go back and play it. And so I, I I booted it up on my Vita, and I'm about 15 hours in, and I just I don't like it. The game sucks. Like I I I. I, and the reason I wanted to play it again was because people I really love and respect love that game. And I'm like, there must be something about it. <laughs> and uh, we, I've had some pretty lively lively debates with some of our viewers because some people like really disagree with me. But I tried to make my case of why I don't like it, which is that it's so, again, it's claustrophobic. It just it doesn't shut up. The game just doesn't get out of its way at all. It's just, I just want to play it, you know? Mm-hmm. And like you take five steps and it's a cutscene. You, you fight a battle and it's a cutscene. You walk down a path and it's a cutscene. And oh. it's, 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 it's like... It's like enough. You know I, what I mean? I like, like can, that. can I just play the goddamn game? Other than that, uh, I was messing with Steam World Dig for a while, which is a great game. Um, mm. Just some, there's something about that game. I don't know why. It's very simple, but um, it's a lot of fun. We were just messing around with Rare Replay today, um, which is cool, but I probably won't go back to that anytime soon. Um, Galaxy uh, is a game that I'm probably going to be messing around a little bit with. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just been Final Fantasy. Before that, it was. Uh, I was like knee deep in The Witcher. I probably never beat that. I got almost to the end of Batman. And I was like, I just don't care anymore. I, I'm in a I'm in a weird place with games where I was telling Greg today. Like, I, I'm looking for something to just kind of shake me by the lapel and be like, you need to play me. And I just don't see anything like that right now. I, they're coming. Those games are coming, but um, it's a pretty it's a lull right now for me. So I'm not like I'm not super excited about anything that's 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 happening. I was super excited about The Witcher, and then the, that game was as dense as a fucking dying neutron star. It was like, there was like <laughs> so much in it, I, I couldn't handle it. Um, especially because I'm so OCD. Like, I just have to do everything. I'm like, I'm not getting anywhere in this game and I just had to give up. Um, so, yeah, not 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 too much uh, of probably relevance to your audience that I'm messing with right now. But once Mad Max comes out I, and once the AAA games start coming out again, I think I'll probably be back on board. Yeah, we talk about a lot of indie stuff here too, so that, that works cool. for us. No, I love indie games, so I'm... Uh, Someone, someone had tweeted out or said something about how, do you, like, do you remember, what was it, like, something about, like, what, it, liking indie games used to be, like, a dirty word, and I always loved indie games, and I was always like, you know, this is where all the innovation and, and fun stuff's coming from, and I still I still stand by that. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really, really great stuff going on in um, in that space, and, and some really, some garbage, too, but 
Um, that's <laughs> that's in, that's in the AAA space as well. So mm-hmm. I, I I love this indie space. These small teams making games they're passionate about. You know, I like being skeptics. able to consume more games. So, sure. so I like these four to ten hour experiences, and then I can move on to another game that gives me a whole different play style and uh, a different sort of experience. Whereas with something like The Witcher, it, that game is so big to me that it turns me off because I, it would take me six months to beat that game, and I want to play more than just a single game. Does that yeah, it's yeah, no, it absolutely makes sense because you have to think about volume versus. You know, again, like we were saying, experiences and diversity in those mm-hmm. experiences. And I totally love sitting down with a game and playing it for 100 hours sometimes. But that's not that, – that's the point I'm trying to make with the open world kind of like – thing is like every game is trying to just shove as much into it as possible. And I think that that's great, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good. You know, Uncharted 4 is probably going to be a pretty phenomenal 12-hour game. That's That puts a lot of 100-hour games to shame. Sometimes you got to just cr- cram as much – as you can, of you know, quality and interest into a game, even if it's not long. And mm-hmm. I, some people look, some people look at it and check a box and be like, "Is it long? Okay, I like it." And I'm like, "All right, that's I'm playing Final Fantasy X right now, and I wish it would end." So it's <laughs> it's you know, so it does length doesn't always mean you know quality. In fact, it, they they don't they don't correlate at all. I, so. I think you're the first person that's answered that question for us negatively. What have you been playing lately? And you're like, "Just a piece of shit, man." I, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, everyone's like, why do you keep playing it? And I'm like, I'm trying to prove a point. Like, I, it's the same reason why I platinumed Assassin's Creed 2, because I fucking hate that game. But no <laughs> one can tell me that I didn't play it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, I have the platinum. It's the same thing with Prototype 2. I'm like, this game sucks. And uh, and I platinumed it. So you can never tell me that I didn't play enough of Prototype 2 to have an opinion on it. So I'm, yeah. I'm trying to kind of make the same point with Final Fantasy X. I was like, it'll get good in 20 hours. And I'm like, all right. Like, I don't know. It's, it's like the Final Fantasy thirteen, you know, forty hour argument where it's like it gets good in forty hours. I'm like, oh, good, great, <laughs> very good. All right. Well, Colin, you've been freaking awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Is there is there a place where people can go to get more information about you and kind of funny? Sure. You can follow me at No Taxation on Twitter and kindoffunny.com has all of our stuff. I won't I won't give you the whole laborious rundown right here. But yeah, come <laughs> find me and hang out. It's good to be here with you guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome, man. Absolutely, thanks. Man. Thanks again, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again sometime soon. All right, sounds good. All right, thanks, Colin. Have a great night. Okay. All right, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, Dustin. Yep. I forgot to do the the uh, the proper send off for YouTube.